quickly learned how to use the Curves tool in Capture One Pro. This photo I took in Patagonia on the Argentinian side. It's on a glacier while I was doing some uh, hiking. I'm gonna pull out the Curves tool right here, make it a little bit bigger, and that looks good. So the Curves tool, it compromises of a few features or information. So right now I'm looking at the main Curves tool, which is an RGB composite. You can see the histogram here as well, similar to the histogram right here. And there's also the Luma channel or the Luma curve, which we'll talk about in a bit, and the, the individual RGB channels. So the curves tool allows you to control luminance, or in other words, the shadows, midtones, and highlights of an image, including in the individual RGB channels. So the left-hand side is the shadows or the darkest part. The middle is the midtones, and the right-hand side is the highlights. So looking at this curve, you can see it's linear right now. So it's equally balanced or supposedly equally balanced. But we need to manipulate it to correct exposure or to color grade or move any color cast. So let's take a look at this histogram right here. So you can see there's a gap. This means right here, this area is the darkest part. And this is the brightest part of the image. So the same thing is here. This is the darkest part of the histogram on the curves tool, and this is the brightest part. So to correct exposure or to level it out, what I'm going to do is change the input of the black point, and I'm going to move it to the right. It's going to make the darkest parts darker. In other words, it's moving or mapping the black point. You can see the shadows got darker right here. Let me go and push the black point even to further to the right. And you can see what happens to the histogram. It gets pushed to the left and you can see the image, it gets darker. But I'm gonna correct the black point to about right here. And it's the same thing with the input of the white point. So the white point, I'm gonna just move it to the left. I'm just clicking, dragging and sliding it over. And I'm gonna move it to around here. So let's see the before and after of this image just by moving the black point and the white point. So you can see the exposure is a little bit better. This is the after and this is the before. And you can look at the histogram as well. See how the white point changed and the histogram shoved to the right here. So that's what the input values do. So I'm gonna move this here. The opposite is different. So I'm gonna reset this curves tool. So remember for the input, I moved the shadows to the right. I was mapping the black point horizontally, but if I map it and change the point here and move it up, what it's doing is it's changing the output. You can see the output number changing here. So what that does is it's reducing the black point or the shadow or the darkest parts of the image. And eventually the image just becomes entirely white. Same thing with the white point here. I can change the output and decrease the amount of white or highlights in the image until it eventually becomes black. So I'm just gonna make sure I reset this. Now, while I'm moving the mouse over the image, you can see the vertical line, the orange line on the image, and that's the point on the image I'm at compared to where it is on the curves tool or on the graph. You can also see the individual lines right here or the individual RGB values while I move the mouse around the image. So let's start manipulating this photo a little bit. The classic example of increasing contrast is to do the S curve. So let me just make sure this image is reset, it is. So I'm gonna decrease the shadows here and I'm gonna increase the highlights and you can see how the image looks now. So there's a lot more contrast. And the good thing about using the curves tool to control contrast is you can individually control the shadows and the highlights. And another thing I can do is change the input value of the black point and the input value of the white point to expose it better. And once you do that, you see the curve changing. So you may have to put another point at it. So I'm just gonna change the midpoint to around here and that looks good. Another thing you have to be careful of is the exposure warning or clipping. So I'll turn on the exposure warning and you can see this is overblown here. So I'm gonna move the output a little bit down here 
to remove the clipping. But some clipping is okay. And one way I can reset this curves tool instead of pressing this reset button here is by clicking on a point and pressing the delete or backspace. Or I can just click on a point and just drag it out of the graph. So let me just totally reset this and let me get rid of the before and after view. That looks better. So one other thing I can do or a common practice is just to increase the brightness of the midtones. So I can do that or I can decrease the midtones, make it a little bit darker. And now let me reset this. So now what's the difference between RGB, the composite channel and the Luma channel? So the Luma channel it increases or decreases the luminance or the brightness value without affecting saturation. So the best thing to do to give you an example of it is, is to do a comparison. So for the RGB channel, I'm going to increase the contrast here and I'm going to overdo it. And now I'm going to go to this variant, click on this variant here. I'm going to go to the Luma channel and do the same thing with the contrast and just increase it. So you can see the contrast here increased saturation as well, but here it'll only increase the luminance as well as decrease the darkest parts. So that's the difference. Let's take a look at the Luma channel here and the RGB channel here. The curve is pretty similar. Let's see if I can do a before and after. And yeah, so you can see the difference in the saturation on the below image when I only use the Luma slider. Now I'm going to go back to this main photo here. I'm going to reset this. So now I'm going to take a look at the individual RGB channels of red, green, and blue, as well as their complement colors. So for red, it's cyan, for blue, it's yellow, and for green, it's magenta. So for example, I'm in the red channel right now. If I increase the midtones, it adds red. If I decrease it, it removes red. By doing so, it adds cyan. I'll reset this. Same thing with green. Green or magenta. And for blue, it's blue or yellow in the midtones. So I'm playing with the midtones right now. I'll reset this. What's a little bit confusing are the input and output values when I'm changing the shadows or the highlights. So if I change the input value by moving this to the left, it'll increase blue in the highlights. But if I change the output value by moving this down, it'll add yellow to the highlights. And the opposite is true here. So if I move this to the right on the input in the shadows, it'll actually add yellow to the shadows. And if I move it up and change the output, it's going to add blue to the shadows or something like that. Same thing with green and red. So one thing I can do is to color grade this image. Let's say I want to make the highlights a little bit more cyan right here, or actually the midtones. I want to make a little bit more cyan here. I'll go to red and I'll decrease the midtones a little bit. And now you can see the sky is a little bit more cyan as well. So I'm going to color grade it or remove the color cast slightly by decreasing the blue in the output by moving this down. And this is what happens if I go all the way, but I'll just move it down slightly to correct the color a little bit. And then I'll change the midtones and balance it out. Keep the shadows here. So that looks a little bit better here. I'm not liking the sky too much. I think what I need to do is add a little bit more Let's see what happens if I have red to the sky. Actually, I'm going to do this. Yeah, so I'm going to add a little bit more red to the sky to make it a little bit more balanced out. So this is the before and after with some color grading. And I can actually see a little bit too much green here now. So what I'll do is add a little bit of magenta to the shadows. And that makes the mountain look a little bit good. When you're doing specific adjustments with the curve, sometimes you don't need to do masking, but other times you will need to do masking. One thing I do need to show you is the color or the eyedropper tool. 
So let me go to the RGB channel, make sure this is reset. To select a point here, I can click on the eyedropper tool, click here. So now you see the dedicated point here and I can manipulate it. I can click somewhere else here. Let's say the snow. And now there's a new point and then I can manipulate it with the curve tool. So when you're moving one point, the curve bounces out. So you may have to balance out another point. And this image actually looks pretty good now. Just doing some weird stuff with this curve tool. It actually looks pretty weird, but it looks nice. It does need a little bit more saturation right here, or a little bit more blue in the highlights. So I can do that a little bit and move it down like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about the uh, curves tool. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.